Hello everybody, my name is Mario Tella and I'm a warm welcome from my side to the Fruct conference. Uh, so I have been invited to make the keynote speak and speech and of course I'm very uh, proud for, to, to give that, so uh, thanks a lot. Um, the, day, the title today is what you see is about uh, real estate um, gasification by uh, artificial intelligence and uh, computer vision technologies um, and um, which fits totally to our uh, topic uh, you see some uh, impressions from our campus in, in Kufstein so that's near uh, in Tyrol in Austria and yes I will speak a few words about uh, myself and then let's uh, jump into the topic so yeah as you see um, I did my PhD in uh, Klagenfurt, so it's a small university in Austria where the main focus and topic was about uh, multimedia database systems. So I was uh, involved in the standardization of the MPEG-7 um, standard uh, at that time and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I built and, and uh, researched on how to establish such a multimedia database system. Um, <clears throat> after that I I was uh, six years in the University of Passau. I did my postdoctoral lecture qualification there, uh, and uh, there and I enlarged my my research activities into the in the area of distributed multimedia systems, so also multi multimedia in mobile systems, multimedia in agent based systems, and so on. Uh, and now, since uh, ten years, I'm here at Kufstein. I have a professorship, uh, but I have a close relationship to the uh, Passau University as well. And, um, well, my research activities here are, um, of course, multimedia analysis, uh, multimedia retrieval. So this is uh, one, one focus, also uh, sensor-based information systems. And uh, there I now, so in the last uh, couple of two, two or three years, uh, I had uh, also a focus on UAVs. With, uh, with the idea of, of course, you have a, a sensor or a visual sensor there uh, and you can analyze uh, images on, on multiple purposes. Okay, yeah, so this is uh, one of the, the main issues about myself. Of course, if you have some interest or some uh, information needs, just uh, contact me. So, um, what's all about today? So, the main focus is on what you see uh, image and uh, computer vision and real estate topics and of course real estate has uh, multiple views what you see here in, in our or in the image that uh, is below so you have multiple floor plans maybe you have uh, images outside of a building you have images inside of a building and so on so uh, today um, we will focus on on some uh, related work issues on this topic and uh, then we will uh, or i will explain about uh, some some uh, research activities and results that uh, we in our group have uh, found and uh, you see i will focus on on some outside images in this case so um, age uh, the definition uh, of a building or the location or the, the building footprint okay uh yeah so of course i cannot do all the research alone so i have to honor of course my team or my colleagues let's say uh, so and and this is i think quite important also for the success of this uh, uh research project because uh, we have a very interdisciplinary team so you see we have experts uh, in the domain of the real estate so this is uh, david uh, for instance uh, he's a very expert there we have um, also experts in the field of computer vision so for instance my colleague uh, in, in St. Bolton, so Matthias is uh, very strong in this uh, domain. And of course, we have some experts uh, that have a mixture of data science and real estate uh, expertise. So Miroslav, for instance, and all my stuff in, or our stuff in, in, in uh, yeah, scientific uh, um, employees and then the master thesis and so on. So great thank, of course. Thanks to, to this team. And so, what is the, uh, the main issue? So, we are working very often to, with some companies, and uh, they, what you see here, are predicting um, prices for for um, for buildings, and uh, they have a lot of images 
in their in their repositories and based on the images so you see outside views inside views and so on they um, predict some prices and, and uh, so it's an expert view and uh, based on that um, prices are, are the houses are sold and so on um, and um, of course this is very very time consuming and of, uh, often of course uh, experts you have different meanings and uh, one idea so this was one of the starting points is that uh, how can we make an, an, an system automatically predict some prices for houses yeah so, so this was the was the beginning of, of our of our thinking lab it was uh, three five uh, three four uh, years ago and yeah so this is all about what, what, what you see here. And um, you see the, the amount of images and the types of images uh, only focusing on, on real estate is huge, right? So you have uh, different views that are outside of the building. You have, of course, satellite views. You have different uh, angles in the satellite views. You have uh, maybe also views from aeroplanes or also from, from UAVs and so on. So you have a lot of, uh, uh, um, of information that can be used for analyzation. Yeah. So in, uh, the <clears throat> in this overview, you see based on the figure that we had before, um, some possible, um, let's say, research um, efforts or classification of research efforts, right? So <clears throat> we have, uh, based on the image types that we have introduced beforehand, you have uh, topics about micro and macro location, about infrastructure topics, and uh, of course about the condition of, of a building on, on its exterior or interior, um, characteristics and also uh, depending on some some class information that you give like a heating demand or age of a building especially um, so this is in real estate research uh, they are talking often from the hedonic price model and uh, there at the hedonic price model the location itself plays a huge uh, amount of role so so when you calculate the price for a building for instance the location itself in addition of course to the characteristics of the building is a very very important um, a field or field of information okay so let's have a deeper look into um, some existing work that work that you can find in literature uh, so we did a, a, a classification and depending on again the type of an image but also on on what kind of research aim uh, the the papers uh, are trying to fulfill right so uh, you see here 3d city modeling out of um, maybe some some aerial or satellite images or uh, the reconstruction of floor plans and then so in the area of how can such information digitized and so on so you see uh, a lot of work um, has been done already and um, last year or two years ago um, we um, introduced a literature review about exactly the real estate image analysis so when you have a look on on this uh, journal paper, you will find a lot of uh, these works and, the, and, and their description. Okay. So when, when we are talking about uh, real estate image analysis, then of course we have two cornerstones in this area, right? So on the one side is uh, all those uh, computer uh, vision techniques that you need to apply. And uh, on the other side, of course, the real estate uh, know-how yeah, in order to what is important on the building and uh, what kind of uh, facets are there and so on. And uh, in addition to the computer vision area, also which will uh, shortly be introduced in the next slide, is uh, the, the new phenomena of uh, neural networks and, and uh, artificial intelligence techniques, right? But uh, coming back to computer vision, so you see here two examples of, of uh, quite, uh, let's say, uh, state-of-the-art um, representations of techniques, right? So on the one side, uh, which has been introduced several years ago, it's the, the key point detection uh, areas. There are plenty of techniques, uh, starting with the SIFT, uh, um, uh, SIFT feature that has been introduced right by Lowe 
And um, you see, this was one of the, the breakthroughs in order to uh, make object detection and, and object uh, classification and so on, um, um, more or less uh, one of the solutions for that, right? So, so this is uh, on the one side. And on the other side, of course, uh, for uh, you need to uh, detect your objects and also to, to classify them. But also uh, segmentation plays a huge role, right? And nowadays you see that uh, we can differ between um, semantic and instance segmentation, right? So semantic segmentation just means, okay, uh, uh, show me or mark all um, elements of a specific type of uh, of uh, object, right? So for all houses or all persons or so on. And instance segmentation goes one uh, step uh, beyond that and saying okay uh, i can highlight all the individual houses or all the individual per, uh, persons and also can assign them uh, saying okay this is a, um, a an industry building or this is a person uh, of this type or this class and so on uh, a, a very important framework uh, just to to finish this is the opencv library there you will find a lot of toolboxes uh, how you can solve right, uh, such uh, computer vision techniques. And well, on the other side, you see here of um, the deep learning um, techniques that, that uh, in the last, let's say, five years or so, um, had a had a big breakthrough, right? I mean, um, you know all that the technique itself is, is quite old, right? I mean, we had it in the 50s, so from the theoretical uh, um, point of view, uh, but nowadays we have the two main important issues in order to make this happen, right? So you you have a lot of data um, that is needed for for training um, our models, and on the other side you have the computing power, right? So in order to um, make uh, the the model uh, or train the model with a lot of uh, input data and uh, get a, <coughs> a, 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 a a labeled or learned model for that, right? And, and I, I don't want to go too much into detail in that, I mean, because uh, it, it can be a, a lecture on its own, of course, but uh, uh, when, when you have a look on the um, on the technology stack right now, then you will see that there are different models has been introduced uh, recently, right? So the GAN networks, CNNs, RNNs, and so on. And also uh, a lot of uh, pre-learned models uh, and data sets have been introduced, right? And of course, this is, you will see it also uh, in, um, in, 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 in our project. <coughs> so uh, data sets and labeling this data is a big issue, right? Yeah, so here's just an example for such a uh, CNN network and, and the individual layers. I mean, of course, I assume most of you are uh, very familiar with these kind of techniques. And uh, uh, you see just the idea is on the one side, you have some, some labeled data. Yeah, and in this case, it's, uh, it's the condition of a building. And in our case, we have three classes. For the three classes, uh, we defined a lot of um, uh, yeah, so some training data, some validation data, and test data sets, um, and then we apply it. In, in this case, you see a CNN um, network with uh, the individual layers. Of course, I will discuss this a little bit in more detail later on. And then you you apply a, a, a training on your data set, and uh, the the model that you create can then be used in order to predict an unseen. Uh, building in one of these three classes. Yeah. Okay, well, so let's have a, a short look to our uh, own uh, contributions just to give you an idea in, in what kind of, of domains and research questions we are uh, working on. And uh, then, because this is, I, I think, quite interesting um, to see that, that there is a, a a similar process chain when, when all of those research questions that we had in mind and also some of them uh, we also have, have some solutions, then you see that uh, there is a, a similar process chain for all of them. Okay, well, so um, this is just an excerpt of um, contributions that we 
did as a group in the last uh, three, um, four, three, four years. Um, and uh, quite, quite important is, of course, the data set. And uh, very important, as I already introduced in the, at the beginning, was for our, um, um, for our success in this case, that we had the interdisciplinary team, right? So we had the experts of the real estate uh, environment. They know, okay, what is important in an image when you have an image of a building, uh, what kind of, of maybe features are uh, interesting, what kind of techniques should be applied. Okay, so this is, I think, was was a very a very big learning also in our uh, institution and at our university. Okay, so um, in the in the next um, couple of slides, uh, right, uh, I will introduce some of our contributions in a little bit more detail. And you see here, so here you see three main uh, areas, right? On the on the one side. The, the question question was okay. Can we use the location in order to make a prediction on the price? Right? The second one was about the condition. So, is it possible to um, predict the, the condition of a building because the condition itself is also a very important uh, issue in in the in the calculation of a price? And the second, uh, the third one was about uh, is it possible to predict for for a a photo of a of a building, the age, and in in when you summar, summarize everything, the heat, uh, the heating, uh, energy demand, right? And and so these have been in in three three uh, questions or research areas. And when you when you now um, compare the the solutions, the, the the steps for the solution, then you clearly see that um, that there is some uh, we can say some structure right so of course we already uh, applied maybe some pre-processing steps we will discuss it uh, uh, in, in one of the next uh, slides so maybe some some sift extraction and so on but always we uh, we had a, a big success by applying a batch extraction so using small batches of an, an single image and do an analyzation on the on the patch um, focus, right? And then, of course, all of our um, techniques uses um, um, different kind of um, models or different kind of neural networks. I will also show that uh, afterwards. And sometimes we also applied some regression uh, in order to. Um, yeah, get the noise somehow out of, out of the um, out of the prediction. Okay, yeah, and, and you also see, um, of course, um, necessary. Uh, we need to have a data set. We had our training, validation, and test data sets, and uh, based on augmentation techniques and so on, we we were able to, of course, uh, enlarge uh, this kind of uh, information. Okay, so let's have a look on one of the first um, ideas and, and the solutions. Um, and um, the heat um, energy demand uh, and, and this contribution I will show in a little bit more detail. Uh, and the others I will just give you an overview in order to get an idea uh, what what kind of, of um, techniques we applied, what kind of uh, results we, we got and so on. Okay, so um, the the idea of of this research effort was to to identify the or uh, to predict the age and the heating demand of a building, right? And and uh, we had a building or we had images of buildings of different uh, angles, different views, of course, uh, always um, uh, from outside. So we only took into consideration uh, images or, or yeah, images of buildings that show the building as a whole and, and uh, from maybe different angles. And uh, you see that um, 
when when you have a look on buildings and, and real estate experts right so when you, when an expert view is is given on the building he will look on some specific areas of a building right on, on the window on the roof on, on the balustrade uh, maybe the doors and and the facades and so on right so these are um, indications about how old is a building what is the condition of the building and so on because um so this was also my learning um when you have different uh, in, in different epochs they use different styles of facades different kind of of uh, windows the roof was different and so on but of course i mean also in our country so austria we are not that big but um, also in our country there are regional differences right so this is quite an important um, know-how that, that you need to have that for instance in in Styria, uh, or in Tyrol or wherever there are sometimes different styles of, of uh, houses okay so so and and based on that um, we we made two observations right so the, the first one is that um, which i already mentioned that uh, there are specific construction demands and then the construction sites uh, for a specific uh, epoch and also that um, we can have um, look on on the batchwise level so batchwise level just means what you see here that this is a small excerpt of a building and based on this small excerpt of a building you could have a look on their on on its characteristics right so so you make a bounding box uh, out of a specific area of the of the house and based on that you can say okay this uh, information which is shown here this is a facade or this, or this is a, a, a door or this is a, a window and based on on uh, the uh, let's say the epoch where i know okay windows of this category have been used in uh, this and this age you could make an assignment yeah so and in, in addition to that what you see here below is that we created, of course, our data sets based on such uh, batchwise uh, levels and uh, assigned it into a different, um, class or, or, yeah, classified it in different areas. Okay. So, yeah. And then what was the next step? So, um, the next step was that we applied um, for our uh, batches. Uh, some, in this case, uh, DCIF uh, feature extraction algorithm um, in, in order to identify interesting areas, right? So, so of course, you, every um, building and every image shows the building from a different angle, from a different side, from a different uh, perspective. And um, the idea with the DCIF feature extraction was to identify these um let's say interesting areas where most information is is given okay so uh, but you can assume when you do that uh, and uh, maybe you are familiar with the with the uh, sift feature extraction uh, it happens that of course you will get thousands of uh, interesting key points right so so because there are many yeah and um, now we we need to uh, to find a way in order to reduce this this uh, huge amount of of interesting areas yeah so interesting areas uh, uh, from the from the viewpoint of um, of the sift feature so and how did we do that you see here uh, we applied um, um, so we used all the batches we applied the k-means clustering um, so that we saw okay these batches so there is one cluster of, of batches, there is another cluster of batches, and uh, we only took the, the centroid of this cluster. So the batch that represents the centroid of the, of, the, of the cluster has been used for further processing. Okay, so this was one way. And uh, afterwards, um, we applied uh, a normalization based on the fixed percentage. Uh, as a representation on how many um, batches we, we want to select out of, of the uh, centroids. And furthermore, so this is what you see here in, in the 
batch extraction phase so feature extraction on the one side batch extraction on the other side is that um, we tried to filter out irrelevant batches that do not show a building or a sub part of a building right because uh, uh, the key point um, extraction also focuses on, on trees and, and uh, cars or persons that are maybe in front of a building or something like that. Yeah. So this is Ill, uh, irrelevant information and uh, therefore what you see here, uh, we trained in, in CNN, in this case what it was in AlexNet, based on these uh, object classes and every batch that shows some um, element of such an object, non-building object, uh, has been uh, discarded. Okay, so what what was the um, the next step? So after the the relevance filtering, so relevance filtering was um, the idea select all those batches that show building and interested uh, interesting element of a building. We feed this um, in in a next. Um, neural network, in our case it was the ResNet 50, um, and there um, we applied the training, right, so so we created a, a model, or we applied transfer learning on, on the model, and um, also in order to enhance the amount of, uh, of uh, images for the training phase, we applied some augmentation techniques in, in, in this uh, um, um, experiments we use the horizontal flipping only and uh, yeah um, that that was um, the more or less the, the, the result of, of the whole uh, process chain right so we use the ResNet for for the prediction of uh, a specific um, let's say epoch and condition but you will see it in the next slide okay so and um, after the training phase, then of course uh, testing and validation uh, has been applied, and uh, you can imagine when you when you have a an, an, an test image or an image that of course has not been seen uh, to the model before, um, we have of course the same uh, chain, so we we use uh, um, different batches of the house, we um, make a prediction for all the individual batches. And then, of course, what you see here in, in this um, image is that uh, some of the batches will be classified in, in maybe a specific age and, and heating demand, and another batch has maybe a, a different heating demand and a different age epoch, right? So, so this can happen because uh, you have uh, separated uh, the image into multiple batches and for every batch you get a prediction. Uh, and, uh, and in order to get the final prediction overall, uh, we applied um, two, also in our experiments, uh, we applied two different uh, approaches in order to make a final prediction. The one was the majority voting. So meaning as, of course, um, the most batches that say, okay, this is heating demand to B and epoch uh, something, right? Then this is the, the final decision. Uh, we also applied a, a, a more um, yeah, intelligent or clever solution with uh, likelihood uh, calculations. Uh, so we took the, the softmax layer of the, uh, of the ResNet um, um, uh, network um, and uh, looked on, on, on their likelihood uh, value and uh, based on that uh, we also tried to um, yeah, propose a final uh, prediction for the, for the whole house. Well, so yeah, here to summarize again, so this is uh, this was the, the overall process as already introduced, right? So we did the feature extraction, the batch extraction, and then the relevance uh, filtering and uh, learning and the prediction. And uh, so now have, let's have a look to, to, the, uh, to the result. And uh, for, um, for the training, um, so we had um, two, around 2,000 um, different uh, detached houses in Austria. So the, the data set has been um, contributed by the company we are, we are working with. 
and uh, 42,000 uh, detached houses, we have around um, 3,800 images. And of course, um, these has been labeled because um, this is our ground truth um, made by uh, external experts, right? So all of these detached houses are assigned to a specific heating demand, are assigned to a specific age and so on, right? Um, and for the heating demand that you see here, we defined uh, five, five uh, different uh, classes. Um, so here you see some, some examples um, on the left side, how does this look like, right? So heating demand and uh, what kind of style, for, let's say, uh, the house has. Okay, well, so and maybe a switch off the camera, it doesn't, it's not possible, but um, you can imagine, so we had, um, Three different uh, class, uh, three, two, yeah, three different classes. So the heating demand uh, classes, the age classes, and the condition classes. And uh, based on the training and, and uh, the prediction, you can see here some some accuracies that uh, we were able to um, to receive. We had two different uh, contributions to that. So th there was a first try, and then we. Um, 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 yeah, modified and, and um, improved some 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 batch processing um, uh, algorithm and also the the what you have seen beforehand major vo uh, majority voting uh, against the likelihood uh, prediction and so on and so in, in a second uh, in a second paper you, we could enhance our uh, our prediction yeah but but um, depending on on what is the the random baseline. Um, for for um, predicting a house to the three classes, we could um, come to quite a reasonable uh, results. Okay, so um, of course it is quite interesting to look on uh, why does it happen quite well for some images and, and maybe for others not. So you see here in this matrix um, the the, the let's say error um, um, that, that has been identified. So if uh, both the, the, cat, the heating demand category and the age um, has been correctly identified, then this is a number here in 0, 0.0. So in this case, we have 227 uh, um, images uh, correctly identified. And then, uh, if there is uh, a differentiation in, in, in the heating category, so it goes uh, on the on the x-axis, and if it is uh, a, a difference in the construction age, so in the age epoch, then it goes to the uh, yeah vertical lines or to the y-axis, and and uh, you you see that uh, a total failure, so meaning category uh, six and four uh, is, is um, not uh, hap, hap doesn't, doesn't happen very often. Um, but of course, we could identify some failures where at least one or two classes has been, um, yeah, was, uh, has, has been classified uh, wrongly. And, uh, um, and one of, so when, when you have a look on the, on the uh, wrong prediction, um, examples, then, then you see that, um, for instance, the, the year here is, there is a big misinterpretation because five, there's five classes different. So it means, and, and the reason for that was that, uh, so when you have a look on the, on the first uh, image here, that, uh, it is a very old building, but it has been, uh, renewed uh, very recently, so meaning uh, the roof has been um, more or less um, yeah, uh, in, um, improved, the, the walls have been improved and so on. So, so therefore, um, yeah, the, this is for an expert, also for an expert, of course, uh, quite difficult uh, to to have to from only from the images um, see what kind of age it is. Okay, and an expert would say uh, would see okay there has been some modification, but uh, not in which uh, yeah in in in, in which uh, circumstances. And this is this was mo this was most uh, uh, most of the 
um, that's it. This was the main reasons were that, right? So, so there have been uh, done some modifications on the buildings uh, based on maybe a new roof or maybe some some um, changes on the walls and so on. So this this was the main issue when um, when the uh, the neural network um, produced some failures. Okay, so well. Uh, for, for the next couple of minutes, um, just have a look on, on two other examples that we applied. And uh, now I will just go briefly uh, over the, um, let's say, two, two um, uh, years. Uh, yeah. So, well, and um, the, the following two ideas are in the area of um, uh, remote sensing, so satellite images. And uh, this is just an, a recap what um, remote sensing is, right? So you, you use a plane or the satellite and uh, you obtain the information about objects, in our case, uh, buildings. And of course, there are many different uh, techniques. So you see passive and active systems and so on. And also the, the type of image, images uh, vary, right? So you have, this is the normal uh, spatial image with, of course, uh, uh, different um, uh, details, then you also have uh, different uh, frequencies or so spectral um, um, where, you, where you have a look maybe on, on color bands and so on. So, so there are different kinds of, of resources uh, and image types that uh, you can use. Okay, so, so in our case, we focused on what you see here, um, satellite images from the spatial point of view with a specific uh, resolution. And uh, the idea here was um, that for a specific uh, city, um, there is based on the surrounding of, of a building, you can classify it in, in, in different, uh, let's say, um, areas or classes. So, so we identified, so this is Vienna, and uh, for Vienna, um, we had a look on the different um, areas and uh, how they can be, um, let's say, um, yeah, introduced in a specific class. And uh, we identified seven uh, or six classes in, in, uh, in this, or seven classes in this case. So uh, you see here a garden city, for instance, or some industry area or some, some um, residential area which is more far away from the center or something which is more near to the center, right? So, so we identified um, seven uh, classes. And now the idea was that uh, based on the seven classes, um, is it possible to predict um, the hedonic price model or the, to apply the hedon hedonic price model? And, uh, uh, our um, um, our process was the following. So we, we um, extracted from Vienna all uh, the images and all the data sets. And then um, we had a look on uh, four other cities in, in uh, Austria. So it was Innsbruck, Linz, uh, Graz and Salzburg. And um, our aim was, is it possible when we uh, train a model based on some uh, um, area classes of a specific city, so in our case, uh, Vienna, to predict the price model. So the hedonic price model was you see, what you see here, the, the, the function um, from another city. Yeah, And um, this, this was in, uh, uh, more or less the, um, the main uh, research question in, in, in this domain, right? And then we, we got uh, uh, quite uh, reasonable uh, results for that. And uh, the second, the second idea was um, about: Is it possible to detect the building footprints of uh, of uh, an, an house uh, based on a satellite image? And the prerequisite for for to understand our approach here is that. Um, you see, there is a, a there are GAN models, so generative adversarial networks, and the idea of a GAN model is that uh, on the one side you have some real world images, right, and uh, you have uh, a generator 
that um, tries to create um, some some fake images, of course, but as much real as possible. Yeah, and the, the discriminator here uh, decides is this is the fake image that has been produced by a generator is this a fake one or a real one and if the discriminator um, identifies an image that has been produced by a generator as a real image then right uh, this is the this is uh, let's say the aim yeah? so to, to cre uh, create a generator that is able to, to produce um, images that look as real as possible and there you see, I mean, this, this was the, the work in 2017, for instance. And yeah, so this is the prerequisite. And uh, what did we do? Um, we, we have in, in Tyrol um, a repository, uh, repository of satellite images. Um, and you see here, so on the one side, we have the satellite image. We also have a, um, a data set about where are the buildings. So this is the, the image type two. So, and also we have the classes, but in this case, the, the classes of the, of the buildings were not of interest. But what we wanted to have is uh, to identify the surroundings of the, of the building. So why is this important? I mean, uh, for instance, if there is, um, um, let's say some, some uh, uh, earthquake or whatever. So there is some, 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 uh, some big issues in, in maybe a city or somewhere, a huge amount of damages, and uh, you maybe want to predict, okay, how much money do I need to rebuild everything? Right? So, so it is import, important to see, okay, how many buildings uh, have been there up before and afterwards of uh, maybe um, such an earthquake or something like that. Okay, and so um, what, we, what did we do? Um, um, we based on the, on the GAN structure and we, we um, let's say, combined two, two uh, GAN structures in, in, one, in one network. Yeah? So you see here, just for a, a short description, that uh, we had uh, as an input image our satellite image and as a second input image the uh, amount of uh, uh, buildings that are visible there. And then the uh, generator first should produce, so the first generator should produce from a satellite image, okay, what kind of uh, buildings are there? And the second generator then should also highlight the um, uh, the, the footprints of a building, right? So the, there, there have been two main questions that we want, uh, that we try to solve uh, with this uh, two-step, um, let's say, uh, GAN network. So on the one, the one, the first question was, okay, where are our buildings? And the second question was, where are the edges of those buildings, right? And, and, this, and the second question was on the, uh, the final solution, okay? Um, and um, yeah, so so you see here the, uh, we applied our satellite images uh, or used the satellite images from Tyrol. We extracted all of them or a sub part of them uh, for uh, for testing. Then we cropped the images so, so that we have the individual batches. Uh, so in some we had around so six uh, six thousand uh, images, and uh, and then we trained our GAN. Uh, GAN model and uh, uh, applied some, what you see here, some, some uh, matrix. And um, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with the GAN because there are many, many uh, contributions already so far. Uh, there, there is a, which is called the Bix to Bix framework, which has some, some similar uh, approach that what I introduced uh, right now, right? And uh, uh, the Pix to Pix framework, uh, so we have some differences um, according to the Pix to Pix framework and, and therefore it was uh, quite nice uh, to compare our uh, new GAN model uh, with the, with the Pix to Pix framework, right? So the Pix to Pix framework also tries to um, to create some, some real images for satellite images, for instance. 
Um, and uh, yeah, and you see here we apply different kind of uh, matrices, so the, the pixel accuracy or the, the intersection over union, and you see that we got quite nice uh, uh, results yeah, for <coughs> identifying the <coughs> sorry for identifying the building footprints. Okay. Yeah, here some uh, here you see some some examples. Um, I just uh, think we need to don't need to go. Uh, into detail in it. It's just for an impression. Okay, so we are uh, nearly at the end. Um, so when when we summarize, so when I summarize uh, the work of our team that we had the last three years, let's so let's say, then we see that of course you also know that um, machine learning techniques and computer vision techniques uh, show, of course, in some very good results. They also can uh, be applied very well to the real estate uh, research environment. Uh, it is very, very good to have uh, experts of the individual fields, so as, as we did um, from the interdisciplinary, <coughs> interdisciplinary uh, point of view. Uh, and uh, another very important issue, but I guess this is also quite common to you, uh, is that of course we need to, or you need to have available data sets, right? So uh, labeling data, we did, we did a lot of manual uh, labeling. Um, this takes a lot of time, of course, for preparation. Okay, yeah, so what are further research activities? Um, so of course we want to in increase our accuracies and also um, uh, focus on, on multiple other uh, sources, so not only the visual domain, so also uh, take other kind of information into account in order to improve um, the, the uh, accuracy of our prediction, of course. Okay, yeah, so thanks a lot. Um, and um, now I'm very happy, of course, to answer your question. Bye-bye. <laughs>